as you know, Mars is a planet with a surface area equal to all the continents of the Earth put together. And in the century we've been here, we've done little more than scratch the surface. The vast majority of the planet remains unexplored. Nobody knows what is out there. So, all you, so if you put in a little pro effort, the opportunity for you to go out into the unknown and make incredible finds is wide open. Just to whet your appetite, here are some of the terrific fame-generating discoveries that you could make. Number one, live nucleated cells of a type never before seen. Number two, fossil traces of extinct multicellular organisms. Three, shells of extinct invertebrates. Four, fossilized bones of extinct vertebrates. Five, dinosaur footprints. Six, recently deposited wildlife stool droppings. Seven, Anomalous industrial chemical deposits in undeveloped locations. Eight, tracks left by vehicles of unknown types. Nine, surface blast marking patterns not matching existing rockets. Ten, rock inscriptions of unknown origin. Eleven, technological artifacts of unexplainable provenance. Twelve, runes of structures clearly designed for non-humans. Uh, Thirteen, alien statues. 14, remains of pre-spaceflight humans, for example, medieval knights. 15, the Holy Grail. 16, the One True Cross. 17, angel skeletons. 18, books or scrolls made of gold foil filled with writing that only you can decipher. <laughs> okay, the above is just a partial list of sensational, life-changing discoveries that you can make. It is by no means meant to be all-inclusive. Some of them require more work to make than others, and some, such as number 18, may be beyond your budget, while those who have tried it have generally found the rate of return to more, be more than ample to justify the investment. The point, however, is that discoveries have to be made. Becky Sherman made hers her way nowadays with the low-hanging fruit already taken, more advanced techniques need to be used. Fortunately, however, such techniques are now available, and for a small consideration, I would be happy to provide you with a list of excellent vendors and public relations representatives who are fully vetted and qualified to help you make and then properly promote any discovery that you desire. By acting in accordance with the above advice, you will do your share to expand the storehouse of scientific knowledge, lift humanity's intellectual horizons, and bring joy and wonder to untold millions seeking enlightenment. There is no sure way to fame. Okay. And so here you can see them preparing a fossil for discovery. Okay, terraforming. There's an extensive technical discussion in this book of terraforming. It uh, explains how it can be done. Uh, in brief, uh, terraforming can be done by uh, the setting up of factories to uh, pr produce artificial greenhouse gases of great potency, release it into the atmosphere, these uh, fluorocarbon gases, uh, and over a period of, of a few decades actually raise the temperature on Mars to the point where the frozen permafrost will melt, liquid water will flow out into the dry channels of Mars, the rivers will flow again, the basins will fill, uh, there will be rain and plants can spread, eventually oxygenating the planet. Uh, now this provides, he's, he's very much in favor of this, uh, even though this is a project of the Mars Authority of which he is otherwise quite skeptical. Um, but he is delighted with this program because uh, it is, uh, affords the opportunity to make very large amounts of money on Mars due to the appreciation of value of land, especially uh, in view of the prospect of future uh, beachfront property. Um, and uh, I guess reading a, a bit on that is in order. Yeah. Okay, so he talks about how it will send up real estate values. He says, please note that the fact that most of the effects of the terraforming effort won't actually occur for at least another century is irrelevant. Since everyone knows that the extraordinary physical improvements are on the way, market values for selected properties are already taking off, and many more can be expected to soar provided things are handled correctly. As an important example of the above, consider the potential sales value of future beachfront property. On Earth, properties that front bodies of water sell for a high premium, and the same will obviously be true on Mars once the terraforming program brings back into being our planet's many ancient ponds, lakes, rivers, seas, and oceans. Now, it may be pointed out that on Earth, it is known precisely where the shore of a lake or ocean actually is, 
whereas we don't know exactly how high sea level will rise on Mars. So a property that might be a prime future beachfront value with equal likelihood could end up far from shore, or worse yet, underwater. While this may sound like a problem, nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, it opens up huge opportunities, since it means that any property on the slope of a basin or valley can be marketed as future beachfront. All that is needed to do so is to obtain an appropriate expert opinion identifying the site in question as being adjacent to the definitive location of a future shoreline. Such opinions, backed up by unquestionable computer calculations, can be readily obtained from many noteworthy and highly credentialed members of the Mars Authority scientific staff uh, in exchange for a small piece of the action. Okay. Uh, And once again, he says, in no time at all, you, your Mars Authority scientific advisor, and the rest of your company marketing staff could all be billionaires. Not only that, you will earn an immense amount of goodwill for yourself, the Mars Authority, and the Martian community in general, because the Earthside investors who buy your stock will no doubt make terrific profits themselves unloading the papers on others, and those on others still others. For at least a century, as the terraforming program advances and the prospect of actually producing something becomes ever more tangible, at least in theory. Remember, property titles are not for using, they're for buying and selling. Keep that fundamental truth in mind and you're certain to make out really well. And um, so, uh, uh, I think you get the idea. Representing, as it does, humanity's highest hopes and aspirations, the terraforming program is unmatched by any other project in mankind's history in terms of the promise it offers to the bottom line of those who choose to embrace its profound vision. Life to Mars and Mars to life. Yeah. Um, so that's his point of view. Uh, and it's very much the point of view, if you want to know, that prevailed in the American West during the period of settlement uh, here. Um, because what you have with an undeveloped planet is an uh, incredible amount of undefined potential, uh, which provides speculative value to all sorts of properties, be they mining claims, uh, real estate, uh, or, or whatever. Now, and so just as in the American West, uh, various claims uh, were sold on the basis of uh, uh, putative information about their mineral qualities or uh, belief that this is where the railroad was going to come through. Many people lost a lot of money buying these claims. Many people made huge fortunes buying these claims. It's a gamble, but people are willing to gamble. And uh, on the basis of uh, such hope, people are motivated to take actions that themselves do increase the value of such claims, such as sending a railroad through claimed territory and so forth. And uh, uh, he tells me, by the way, that um, uh, when he was writing this book, he read a very ancient book uh, called Roughing It by Mark Twain and uh, found many similarities um, to life as it was proceeding on Mars to uh, the developments that were occurring in the uh, American frontier. Uh, okay, so he shows the value of, of computer projections. Uh, here's a definitive computer projection of the future Mars after it's terraformed. Note all the beachfront property. Uh, he discusses how on Mars uh, uh, families still exist, um, which is a big surprise to people uh, coming from Earth, uh, where the welfare state has made them unnecessary, um, and therefore an obsolete institution. Uh, um, he uh, explains how you can meet your uh, soulmate on Mars. Uh, he even f uh, provides quite a list of pickup lines to use. I don't know if you want me to read any. Hold still, I think the oxygen line on your suit is loose. Let me tighten it for you. Um, Let's see. Uh, you look like the nurse who debriefed me when I had my debarkation medical inspection. No? Well, it's not too late. <laughs> Cold today, isn't it? New in town? Need a hab for the night? Um, uh, 
Hi, I'm looking for a prospecting partner too, but don't you think we ought to get to know each other first? Um, have you heard about the new two-person uh, 